I actually remember the first protest I ever went to, because this dude was going off on the mic. He was like, if you didn't come here to die, <laughs> then leave. And I was like, that is not what it said on the flyer. That is. Yeah. What's up, Montreal? So, I ain't gonna lie, I needed this. <laughs> I, I did, I did. Cause me and my family found out some of the worst news possible. We found out that my uncle is on TikTok. <laughs> this is not good for the family. He will be canceled immediately. I don't even blame him, honestly, I blame TikTok. Cause I got beef with TikTok. My main beef is I hate seeing rich families <laughs> dance in unison. I hate that. <laughs> Money and rhythm. <laughs> what can't the Jacob family do? It's too much power, you know? You hate to see it. I love that phrase, by the way, you hate to see it. I wish they said that back in the day, you know, someone's like, the British is coming! And one dude in the back like, you hate to see it. <laughs> classic British, classic. You know, I hate to see a lot of stuff, honestly, though. Earlier in my career, I used to live in a building that used to have caution tape in front of the entrance. Yeah. <laughs> Try bringing the date back and acting like you didn't see the caution tape. I tried to keep a conversation going. She's like, how's your mom? I'm like, oh, she's good, you know, she's just going through some things. <laughs> she's like, what's that? I'm like, oh, they just making a movie. <laughs> she's like, what movie? I was like, oh, uh, Law and Order. <laughs> the movie. <laughs> they gonna tell Ice-T's backstory. I've been waiting on this. <laughs> Turns out he was Dominican the whole time. <laughs> quite the twist. <laughs> and you know, y'all probably can't tell by looking at me right now, but growing up in Flint, Michigan, I used to be way cooler than this. <laughs> or not, damn, okay. <laughs> y'all went to my school <laughs> in the US. <laughs> but I tell you this, the reason I was so cool is because I used to have a signature on my name. At the end, I don't know if you remember what that was, it was like a cool catchphrase you could put at the end of all your text messages. And mine used to be, Ballin'! Cause I was broke. <laughs> now I never get around time, my best friend's grandmother got sick, I felt bad. I tried to call him on the phone, but he didn't pick up, so I sent him a text message, but I forgot to cut the signature off. So the message just read, hey man, so sorry about your grandma. Ballin'! Just not ballin'. He was pissed, he called me, he was like, you serious right now? Pick a time, pick a place, it's going down. And I didn't want to fight, so I tried to pick a time, he wouldn't know when it was. So I was like, all right, it's going down at dusk. And I hung up. <laughs> he called back at six in the morning, like, uh, when is dusk, when exactly? I was like, before dawn, and I hung up. I would try to fight him, yo, people in the Midwest are wild. One time I met up to fight with a dude from Detroit. Right when I got there, he had a rest in peace shirt with me on it. I said, oh my God, where have I seen him before? To make it worse, I was on a shirt like this. I was like, I have, I have never done that pose. How is he gangster and creative? <laughs> Nobody in Montreal can mess with a thug that knows how to use Adobe. It's next level thugging, man. And everyone in this room remembers their first official fight. And I'm not talking about a fight like back in the day in school, security's there. I'm talking about a fight between two people by themselves. I knew it was my first official fight because after he hit me twice, I started asking myself questions like, who gonna break this up? Uh, <laughs> we ain't got no referee. You know, I knew I didn't want to fight. Midway in the fight, I was like, do you want to stop? Like I asked him. Had to get his opinion on this real quick. I'm like, do my punches hurt? Cause yours do, and um. Uh... 
I feel like you should hit yourself a few times so you can see how I feel about this. Make it fair, you know. Luckily for me and my left eye, I don't fight no more. Now the only fighting I do is against injustice. Yeah, trying to protest more, get out there. I actually remember the first protest I ever went to, because this dude was going off on the mic. He was like, if you didn't come here to die, then leave. And I was like, that is not what it said on the flyer. That is, <laughs> it said allies welcome. <laughs> and maybe music, it was a maybe music. There was a lot of speculation about the music, you know? And I was like, maybe this is too much for me. Maybe I should leave. Everybody's sitting down and facing him. All of a sudden, everyone stands up, turns around, and is facing me. Because it turns out in the protest, sometimes the back of the line becomes the front of the line. I went from a dude who was late at the protest to Malcolm X in two seconds. I wanted to be in the revolution. I didn't want to lead the revolution. I would have dressed better put on some civil rights drip or something at least. Everybody had on dope drip. People had on shirts that said stuff like, black lives always matter. My body, my choice. My shirt, my shirt said, less Monday, more Sunday. <laughs> like that's a message, but not the message, if you know what I mean. That's like everybody was on the mic like, no justice, no peace. And I was like, yeah, 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 but can we get one more day on the weekend? Just one more day. <laughs> Yo, thank you. My name is G.K. Robinson. Appreciate you. <laughs>